Hi everyone, my name's Charles, and this is part eight of the OpenSCAD video series. In this part, we're going to talk about for loops, ranges, and how to define ranges with different steps. And that's it, let's get started. So a for loop is a very common um, idea in programming. And uh, essentially what it does is it loops through a bunch of different values so that you can do uh, something similar um, for a bunch of different values. So the syntax for that in OpenSCAD is for parentheses and curly braces. So essentially what this does, you define your variable, let's say uh, i, which often stands for index, equals, we need square braces. And this is a little bit different than just having a three-dimensional vector with three inputs. This is a range. We're going to define a range that has um, uh, more or less than three. It's, it's a different idea, really. So we say maybe we want to start at zero. And then we put a colon, not a semicolon and where we want to end. And when you define your range like this, OpenSCAD is what's called inclusive, which means it will give you every value from 0 to 10, including 10. Whereas most programming languages, uh, they're exclusive. So they'd give you the numbers from 0 up till 9, including 9, but not including 10. So they'd, they wouldn't uh, include 10. But in OpenSCAD, in this case, it does include 10. So um, let's see what we can do with this. So let's define a Q. Say the size is equal to 10. And the center is true. And that doesn't look like it's done anything for us. Uh, it seems that we just have one cube. Now, what you can't see is that there are actually 10 cubes here, uh, all superimposed on top of each other. Um, and so to wait, the way to bring those out is we translate them. So we will translate them along the x axis. And since the size of our cube is 10, we'll do double that. So we'll say times 20. And what that did is it generated 11 cubes, one for each number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And it did what we told it to. For each one, I took on the value um, 0, 1, 2. Maybe, you know, I can use the echo command just to show you every value of i. So you can see that uh, i takes on every value from 0 to 10, and it does what we've told it to do here uh, by translating each cube, uh, whatever the value of i is, times 20. So in the case where it's 0, 0 times 20 is 0, so nothing happens. So we have this cube right here, that corresponds to this cube. When i is equal to 1, right here, uh, we take 1 times 20, and we translate the cube 20 in the x direction. So that's what corresponds to this cube. And we keep doing that until we get to the last one. And that's, that's mostly what for loops do. Uh, it's hard to to give a be all end all solution what for loops are good for, but uh, they're very useful and important and there's a lot that you can do with them. So something else that you can do is you can start from a negative number. So let's start from negative five. So now we have from negative five to 10. So we have um, a bunch of values that i takes on and 
it does this action, whatever's inside the for loop for each value of i. And that's essentially, that's mostly what most for loops do. Um, so something that you can do with these ranges, let's focus on this range for a little bit. There's a few things that you can do. Uh, quite often you can start from zero and go to 10 or whatever number you want. You can change it to 50 and we have 50 or we have 51 cubes. Um, and maybe we also want the size of the cube to change as it gets further away. So we'll say the size of the cube is I. So the size of the cubes gradually increases as we get further away. So um, another thing that you can do is this always goes up by one when it's defined like this, but there's another way to make it go up by smaller increments. So let's say we want to go up by 0.5 every time. We only want to go half of a step or half of one. So we just put in 0 0.5 and this determines the step. This essentially says go from zero to 50 by increasing by 0.5 every time. So it's going to start at zero, then it's going to go 0 0.5, then one, then 1 1.5, then two, et cetera, et cetera, until it reaches 50. That will take on the value of 50 as well. So you can increase or decrease the step. Uh, just be aware that every time you do that, every time you decrease the step, um, you end up with more values, usually, depending on what you're doing, but a lot of the time you end up with more values. So whereas before there were 51, uh, I think there are now probably 101 values that are being, um, that are being displayed or being processed. So every time you do that, you end up with more values and uh, most computers can only render so much. So you just got to be careful which values you put in. You could accidentally crash the program. But other than that, uh, another thing that you can do is you can start at a positive number. Say you want to start at 50 and you want to go to zero. Now you can't do it with a positive step. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything. But if you make the step negative, then you end up with essentially the same thing. You can start at a negative value or you can start at a positive value and go to a negative value. You can go in either direction. It's just important what kind of step you're defining. So let's go back to something simple. Let's go zero through 10. And then, although this is might be an interesting example, um, I'll do something a little bit more fun. I'm gonna make an ice cream cone. Okay, so to start our ice cream cone, we should probably start with the cone. Uh, so we'll make a cylinder. Say the radius will be equal to 10 and the center will be false. Just to be explicit, we'll make it fairly fine. So the FN, FN will equal 100 and the height will equal 70. Well, that doesn't look like much of a cone. So we need to define R1 as well as R2. And there we go. Now it's just pointing in the wrong direction. So if we want it to point up, we can rotate it. We can either rotate it around the X or Z axis. I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees around the X axis. So now the flat part will be facing up. So now uh, we have our cone, but we don't have any ice cream.
So to generate our ice cream, maybe we want a certain number of scoops. We're going to create a variable for the number of scoops that we have. Um, let's say we want three scoops. That's a fair amount of scoops. So we'll say scoops equals three. And now we're going to define a for loop. We can use a different variable. It doesn't always have to be I. So we'll say for N is equal to, so we want to start with zero. And then we want to go, since we want three scoops, we don't want to go all the way to three because that would, um, that would give us four scoops because it would take on every value zero two, three, including three. And if you add the, if you know the number of values, that's four. So we only want three values. So we go and write scoops minus one, and that will go from zero to two. And if we have zero, one, two, that's three values. And so we'll have three scoops. So for the scoops, we're going to use spheres. Let's say, let's make the radius the same as the radius of our cone, let's say it's 10. And let's say our spheres have a high FN value two of 100. And well, we get a sphere, which is good. That's really good. Um, but we have we now have three spheres superimposed on each other. And that's not what we need. We need them to move a bit. So we need to translate them. So we're going to translate them in the Z axis in the Z direction, so that um, they go up. And so we get ice cream scoops on top of ice cream scoops. So a good amount maybe for this is um, well, we obviously want n in there and somehow, and we can look at our radius. And maybe say maybe a little bit less than two times our radius. So let's say times 15. So it'll move 15 up every time. So let's see what we get with this. And that doesn't look too bad. Um, and so now we have a bunch of ice cream scoops. Uh, maybe the radius should be a little bit bigger because if you notice here, there's something funky going on with the bottom of our cone or the wide part of our cone and the sphere. So we might want to make the sphere just a little bit bigger. So we'll make it size 11. Give it a radius of 11. Um, and now we're pretty much good to go as many scoops as you want. Maybe you just want one scoop. Then you have one scoop. Maybe you want 30 scoops. That would be a pretty big ice cream, ice cream cone. Um, I doubt it would stay upright, but in this space, you can do whatever you want because there's no gravity. So, um, that's mostly it for just the basics of a for loop and ranges and, and steps and creating things using for loops. That's essentially the basics of it. Um, I can show one more example that will be just generally helpful. Uh, I find it really useful whenever I'm making models. And that is if you want a bunch of objects evenly spaced around the center, a center of something. So uh, we'll create another for loop. say Q. Um, we're going to create another variable. Variable. Um, let's say we will have 10 objects. Say zero through 
var minus one. So let's say we just have cubes. So we have now have 10 cubes superimposed on the same spot. And we, um, we want to, let's say we want them evenly spaced. We want to rotate them around the axis and we want them evenly spaced. So now that they're translated, we're going to add a rotate uh, command instruction, whatever you want to call it, function. And since OpenASCAD works with degrees, um, essentially what we do is we multiply by 360 and divide by how many objects we want around the circle. So we have 360. Uh, we have 10 objects around the circle or our variable, so var. And um, the way that we can step through this, it's, it's kind of hard to, to show uh, or explain, but, um, we multiply by Q. And so what that does is for every value of Q, we've essentially, what we've essentially done with, with this, uh, operation right here is we've taken, a a circle and divided it up into 10 pieces. And for every value of Q, because we Q is essentially the numbers from zero to 10, every time it increases or changes, uh, we add a little bit to that P to the degrees of the circle. So you'll, you'll see what I mean. So we know our starting point is um, in the x direction. This is our first one. And so when x is 0, we have 0 times 360 divided by 10, which is 0. And then we have 1 times 360 divided by 10, 36 degrees. So this one's rotated 36 degrees. And um, this is 2 times that. So that's 72 degrees, et cetera, et cetera. And we work our way around the circle every time adding a certain amount of degrees. And eventually we come back to this one. Um, but because we have minus one, the way we've declared our range, uh, this one doesn't get made twice. It, if, if we let it go to 10, then this one would be made twice. But since it's only goes to nine, it only, uh, each, each cube is only created once. So that's a, a thing for efficiency, but this is how to, um, evenly space a certain number of things around a circle, which can again, be really helpful. So let's say we want to increase that. To 20. Now we have 20 things. And this is this is really the basis of um, parametric design. Because now I can change this as much as I want to 15, 7 maybe, uh, what, whatever I need it to be, 100. That makes more of a ring. This is not a very good way to make a ring. There are better, much better ways to make a ring. Um, but yeah. This is essentially how you uh, evenly space things around a circle. And that's mostly it for this part. So thank you for watching and bearing with me. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.